This video is only one part of an in-depth review, so check out the rest at thegoodride.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome to The Good Ride, where we carefully carve and we're overly optimistic on our ollies. And this is the LibTech T-Rice Orca. And next to it is a pot of Orcas. Looks like the lift lines, because this is probably the most popular, highest selling board out there. So next to it, we have the 150. Then we have the 153 Apex Orca. This is a 153, by the way. And then over there, kind of not quite the same, but because it's a golden Orca, I put it in here. I've ridden this 53 three years in a row now in a wide variety of conditions. And I've ridden my 150 throughout a season at Mount Bachelor because I own that one and love it. But I got this 153 to compare to the Apex Orca in a 153. And I tapped into our limited good ride budget to do so because I really felt like a lot of people were asking questions about all the Orcas and I wanted to get out a good review of the Orca in depth and compare it to the pod that is here for 2022. I rode this at Mount Hood in the summer, but I've had this in a wide variety of conditions and it's the same model it was when it was released the first year. So I've ridden it in just epic, good midwinter snow in a 53, hard, uneven, bumpy snow, good kind of midday spring snow, slushy snow, and all kinds of other snow, including powder in my 150, pretty much everything now, and ridden it a lot. But I compared this particular 153 against the Apex Orca at Mount Hood in the summer. And conditions looked awful, but they were actually really fun. And I've ridden it with the Burton Kendos and the Union Atlas primarily, but I've gotten this on my Burton Tourists with drift boards. I've gotten this with Adidas Tactical ADVs. I've gotten this with Burton Ions, Imperials, all kinds of boots, all kinds of bindings. To give you a short summary, the Orca is one of the most popular boards out there and it's a great board, but it can often be over-recommended. Sometimes you pull up in a lift line and you'll just see like 10 orcas in the lift line, but it does a lot of things really well and it's a really fun board and I even own one. It has excellent edge hold. It's a very turny board. It has a much more turny side cut than any other Travis Rice board other than the Apex Orca. And it is just fun for the average rider like myself. It can slash and turn really quick it doesn't carve really hard. If you want to carve hard, get the Gremlin. That's a much better board for that. But it floats really well in powder and the aggressive magna traction doesn't grip as much as I thought it would in softer snow. Uh, it still grabs a little, but it's not terrible. And overall, it's just a very forgiving, fun, ride that a lot of people can enjoy and it's fun to ride a smaller size. Now speaking of sizing, this 53 is just a little bit too much for my size 9 boots. Weight wise, I like the 53 better than the 50, but with my weight of 185, 190 when I was mainly riding these boards, I was really surprised at how well the 150 held my weight. I just felt like the 150 could turn better. So if you have a size 10, 11 and you're like my size like 510 180 to 190 you're gonna like the 53 better but if you're under size 10 you're like nine eight and a half go 150 that's gonna be the the size for you with this wide waist you can fit a pretty big guy on this in the bigger sizes and as it gets smaller you can fit a smaller lighter guy on that as well so lots of sizing here. Now, when it comes to shape, you're looking tapered directional and you feel it a little bit, but not as much as you would think. When it comes to camber profile, you have a pretty pronounced semi-aggressive camber in the back foot, but it doesn't touch the snow. It's still sitting well off the snow. You have pretty pronounced rocker in kind of the middle point, but it's middle back. Then you have a long elliptical camber that goes up to the nose, which seems like has a little bit of early rise, maybe before the nose, but that's sticking up too. And what it does is it makes it 
very auto spinny in harder snow. It doesn't track well, it kind of does this and it kind of wants to spin on you sometimes when you're flat based or one footing off a chair. But once you get it on edge, that edge hold grips really well and then it tracks well. And in normal conditions, the more soft the snow gets, the more stable this board gets. So it's a little inconsistent depending on the condition, but overall, it's something that's very easy to get used to and it's a very forgiving ride. Very easy to skid your turns. Uh, when you get off your game, and I love that. Let's talk flex here. This Orca is definitely a little softer, has a little more give than the Apex Orca. So like right here, it's really stiff. A little softer in the middle. Really stiff in the tail. Here's the twist here. Pretty easy with the Orca. Let's just compare it to my 50 Orca. This has been ridden a lot more than my 53 though, but you can see kind of same general flex pattern. Here is the Apex Orca. It has that give in the middle and that same stiffness in the tip and the tail. And all of them have a pretty easy twist um, to them that's kind of fun torsionally. Just for shits and gigs, this really isn't similar to the other Orcas, but here is the Golden Orca little softer throughout from tip to tail. Still a pretty fast, aggressive board, for, especially for hybrid rocker, but a little more twist. So the Orca's a pretty poppy, snappy ride. And when it comes to buttering, it breaks a little easier in the middle because of that rocker. It's already a little softer there to start with, but then you have the tip and tail up, so it just you can already start your butter and get more leverage and bend the board easier than you would think for this flex. And it's a pretty fun board to butter, especially my 150. I love that. Now, when it comes to the Apex Orca, it still has an easier break in the middle, but it's definitely stiffer, and you can feel it when you're riding. It just feels a little more stiffer, a little more poppy, but it's a grand and that's really expensive. Now the Golden Orca, that's pretty stiff and poppy too. I liked the Orca a little bit better. I felt like it was just a little stiffer and a little sh in, in a shorter package, so it was just easier to control and manage. The, the Golden Orca does have good pop and I could butter it pretty well. All three have really good pop, but the Apex Orca wins in terms of Ollie power. When it comes to speed, uh, I feel like this Orca in a 53 and even a 50 is pretty fast for a hybrid rocker. It's got a good base. It's pretty chatter free. It has some good dampness. And what I thought was interesting was the base glide of the regular Orcas that you see here, the 50 and 53, was kind of on par with the Apex Orca. I didn't really feel like I was getting faster base. They felt really close. And usually at $1,000, you get a faster base. So that was kind of a disappointment with the Apex Orca. Positive is the Apex Orca is more damp, more poppy, and not more chattery. A lot of like high-end versions of the regular, you know, like the ultra boards, they're lighter, they're poppier, they have a better base, but they're just chattery. And especially for a guy my weight, like 180s to 190s, they can be really chattery and bucky and bouncy. This isn't, the Apex Orca isn't, and that's a cool surprise. But the regular Orca, you can point it really well for a kind of a shorter, wider ride. Even my 50 did really well. As long as you got it just the edge a little bit in, you can't really flat base and bomb. Kind of does this sometimes in certain conditions. But when you point it like this, it was really fast. And then in uneven terrain, this little 150 can just jam. I love it in uneven terrain. Going through moguls, I just felt so comfortable. The 53 is a lot more work because it's just wider and harder for me to turn. But all of these Orcas, yeah, the Golden Orca, the Apex Orca, and the regular Orca, all absorb chatter really well. The Apex Orca's a little more cranky in uneven snow, but it's still an all-day resort ride. 
And this is even better because it just handles kind of that slow speed micro bumpy chatter really well. And it's an even better all day resort ride. Now, when it comes to edge hold, all of these Orcas, this whole pod grips well. I personally like the feel of the Gremlin, which has the same amount of edge hold, kind of a deep side cut too, but it's full camber. That just tracks so much better in hard snow, but it's much, much more unforgiving. So if you skid your turns or want to be able to skid your turns when you get off your game, you're gonna have to deal with this kind of like loose feel, auto spinny feel between the feet that comes with hybrid rocker with the tip and tail being off the snow. But it's a worthwhile exchange because you have a forgiving ride and once you get it on edge, it grips just like the Gremlin. One cool thing too is I thought this aggressive magnet traction would grab a little more on softer snow. It still grabs, especially between the feet, but it doesn't grab as hard as you would think and it's really easy to get used to in soft snow. Now when it comes to turn initiation, it's always dependent on your boot size and your weight, your height to a lesser extent. And my size nines on the 150, the turn initiation's fast, it's fun, it's like medium fast, it's fun, it's magical for me. It's really quick and snappy and it's slashy and fun. When I get up to the 53, it's a little slower, but once I get the side cut, the deep side cut engaged, it turns really well and it's a fun turner. But with the 53, it's a little more across the groomers, it's a little less circle carvy than the 150. It's a really deep, turny side cut and it's really fun. So if you match it up correctly to your boot size, you're gonna have a very turny, very slashy, very fun board. One place though, when it comes to carving, it's just not quite the carver that a lot of boards are out there. And that's just the hybrid rocker thing. If you get over the back part and you get on the middle of that camber and you really lean into that back foot, lean into it, it's a good carver, but it's no gremlin. The gremlin is just unreal. This gremlin in all its camber glory has a deep side cut like the regular Orca, but just has full camber and just carves like a champion. So if you want a good carver at the expense of not as good float and powder as the Orca, you want the Gremlin. I also found that the Apex Orca carved a little better, but it wasn't that much better to really convince me to get that one. And in comparison to the Golden Orca, it's gonna have a nice balanced turning radius and you can do a little bit of everything. But the Orcas have more of a circle carvy and slashy kind of ride compared to the Golden Orca. And then in comparison to the Gremlin, that's more committed, hard carving, turny, uh, circle carvy kind of ride, kind of like the uh, Orca. Their side cut radius is very similar and their depth is very similar. Now, when it comes to powder, I just love the Orcas. I didn't get the 53 in powder, but I got the 150 in powder and compared it against the 152 Gremlin and it just blew doors over the Gremlin and it's a very good powder board. It has, a, first off, it has taper, it has a long nose, it has just a more mellow elliptical camber. It's got that rocker in the middle, so the tip and tail are already pointed up, and it just floats really well. It's not a dedicated powder board, but it's close. And you could use this as your powder board if you set it all the way back, because it has pretty good setback on board. If you compare it to the setback on side cut, the setback on board with a 21.75 inch stance width, is 4.125 inches back on board. That's pretty far and it just feels really good. It blew doors over the Gremlin and it, I haven't ridden the Golden Orca in powder, but I don't even want to because it's got a 2.25 inch setback on board with the same stance with 221.75. And that just doesn't have the float. It's more that border between a really good all mountain kind of ride and a free ride ride. It's more free ride because of the taper, but it's not that great for free ride, but it's okay. 10 times out of 10, I would choose the shorter, wider, 
more setback, more directional, more tapered Orca. And same with the versus the Gremlin. This is just a better ride. So overall, I think the Orca is a really fun board. It's often over recommended and that's just something that happens when you're, you know, it's Travis Rice. He's just a good guy. He's everybody knows and likes him. Everybody loves his boards, loves how he rides. So it gets over recommended. Is it a bad board? No, it's a, it's, it's a great board and I own this 150 and I love it. It's a really fun board that comes in a shorter, wider package. It's really fun, it's really turny, really slashy, and it works in a wide variety of conditions and for a wide variety of ability levels and riding styles. So I can see why this gets over-recommended. All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average rider's perspective. There's no brand oversight. And we're free to say whatever we want. We send back everything unless it's a favorite. Then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the contact us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you want to support us and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So thanks for watching.